Hello and welcome back to Cody's Radio Workshop. On the bench today we've got a Rambler. You've seen me do a Rambler before but this one's been sent in to me by one of my customers who bought a radio from me, a white Rambler, and he wants me to have a look at his black Rambler, which I believe was only able to pick up Radio 4. So, without any further ado, let's get started. With just a general look over the radio, I can see it's got the brightness in here, but he's handily taped it back onto the top there. So I'll take that off and pop that on one side. Uh, it just fits inside there. This will need cleaning up and uh, some glue applying to there and then pop the top on. There are two brights here which are missing. Uh, the volume feels a little stiff. The tuning, that feels pretty free. And the switches operate correctly. Just looking at the general condition, you can tell it's uh, it's had a previous life, um, but you know we should be able to tidy that up a little bit too. Um, there are a couple of little nicks here. I should be able to do something with that to make them less obvious. Uh, the badge is okay. The grill's actually okay. Uh, the bright work, the bright bars at the front, they're generally okay but uh, we'll take those off and clean out whatever's underneath there. But he did say that it only works on Radio 4, so I'm just going to test that now. Not that I don't believe him, but it's just so that I'm starting as if this was an unknown. So what I'll do is I'll connect the power supply up to the battery connectors and making sure it's off before we start, so I'll just slide the bottom away and connect up the external power supply and we'll have a listen and, and a tune through and see what we've got here. Pop the handle out of the way, turn the volume right down, turn that back off, I'll turn on the output of my power supply. There's my signal generator, let's turn that off. Two, three, yeah, three stations, which is a little bit deaf. And on long wave, I'll turn that round. Nothing at all. So yeah, the diagnosis is as was reported. It's a little deaf on medium wave and it's completely deaf on long wave, so we will need to take this apart. So here we go with the screwdriver into the side. A little bit then. There we go. So that's it pushed out. The screw did anyway come out. So I'll just lightly screw that back into the side so that we don't lose that. There. And for the moment we'll pop the case on one side. Looking inside, can't see anything untoward, there's no bulgy or blown caps. But these electrolytics, the Philips blue ones, will likely all need changed anyway because they'll likely all be out of specification. One thing, there's one, two, Power supply is on. Hey, we'll stay doing it. And long wave. Hmm. Still nothing there on long wave. 1500 kilohertz on the signal generator. There we go. 
blocks and that doesn't sound too bad already does it and VC4 and VC2 so VC4 is here and I'm just looking at the milliwatt meter now which is useless because I haven't actually connected it. <laughs> well, that's better. We've got a reading on there. So VC4 first. Let's turn the sensitivity down so we get a better reading. There we go. Got that one then. And long wave now. Remembering to switch over the switch to long wave and over to 200 meters on the scale, which is here, which is there, and 257 kilohertz. So, investigating while it's still switched on and we've got a weak signal, just turn it over because that's where that variable is there, and you hear it's just come back in now just because I've turned it over there we go there is a wire here which isn't attached to anything get some solder back on the situation and reattach that wire to where it should be it's only a link wire that goes to the to the wave change and it just was not attached but now it is so let's get back to the alignment that's so there right and now long wave again five to six meters on the scale so that's way over here there and 160 kilohertz dialed in on the signal generator and this time we have to move L3 which is this here on the ferrite rod you hear that getting better and worse but I can see it on the needle and I'm looking for the maximum improvement on the needle swing which is about there maybe a tweak more that way there and then what I like to do is get the soldering iron, remelt the wax that's held that in place for the last 50 years, and the same with the medium wave, just so that they don't move again. That just resets it back into place. So I've just found out that we also might have a problem with the power wire. So I just, you can see I've just got my snips there and I'm just lifting so I just move the power wire So it's not that one there I'll get the snips just yeah, so I'll possibly need to remake one of those joints there as well. Wow, I do enjoy a challenge. So let's get a soldering iron onto the positive, which goes to the power switch there. Just reflow that solder. I actually put a little bit extra on there as well. And the same with the negative wire, which is here. Okay, we'll retest that in one moment, because what I'm now going to do, 
because I get a lot of interference noise around the bench from the different equipment I have switched on, I'm just going to pull it away from the bench so you can just have to listen. 8,000 and maybe more than many people expected. So that's that part done. I'm quite happy with that now. I'm, uh, I was a little perplexed with the trimmer pot there for long wave, how it didn't make any difference. But I found that on the uh, reverse of the board, going from the long wave switch to the main board, um, it had become somehow detached. The other ones, I've visually checked them, they, they look to be okay and I gave them a little nudge earlier as well to make sure that they were still holding. Uh, there isn't anything touching the back of the volume pot now, so there's no shorting to go there. And we've recapped and aligned it and it's working now as it should. So what I'm going to do next is to take off the control knobs, like so, and these ones. Sod's low says that middle one won't come out. But here's an old trick I learned in the Sudan to use some snips to dig in and lever up, and it will push it off. Then I can take the bright bars off, zoom you out, take the bright bars off the edges, and then you can just lift the dial face off, give it a clean underneath, give the dial face a clean, pop that back on. Clean the bright bars, pop those back on. Clean the knobs, repair the knobs, put those back on. And then it's a matter of doing the case, cleaning the case, prettying it up, getting rid of all these little nips and things. I can't really repair them as such, but I can make them a lot less noticeable. These here will disappear. So the next time that you see it, it should look a lot better. And that will just be the show tell. And, uh, and the performance test so that Peter can see what's been done to it. I'll also clean along the inside of the radio here you see where it's all gone grey that is years worth of use there's nothing you can do to stop that over time it's just been loved and it should continue to be loved. One thing. So here's the radio now done I've given its face a polish all nice and shiny on the front the grill's lovely the bright bars are lovely I've cleaned the teak ends and given them a little polish. Uh, the handle has been polished, the knobs have been polished, all nice and shiny. You have a look at the top there and even round on its bottom. It's actually really nice. So all that's left is for us to have a listen and see if we've improved it and see if Peter will be happy with it. So I'm going to hand you over now to Cody's Junior who's going to demonstrate the radio for us. Hello. So uh, if we put it onto medium wave, it turns on, and we tune through the stations. Best reception turned up towards the side almost, and then long wave, which is as a good working station. It must work as it as it tilts to its side. And then we have another one. Up. The championship's getting harder. And uh, uh, the very last one at, at the very end. And then we move uh, on to long And then it has a hiss and a bit of a crackle. As you keep going, it gets a bit better. 
Okay, and as we turn it around, it improves the reception on the audio. You, you can hear instead of hiss or crackle. And I think you can agree that Robert's done a very good job with this Robert's brand new work. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.